بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Some of my brothers and sisters who are following my accounts have asked Bro, why don't you just block these trolls, these people who are just attacking you They're hiding behind these, behind these pseudo uh, accounts saying things such as your wife abuser and this and that Well, I think brothers and sisters don't understand what's, what's the phenomenon behind these things not everyone requests a response. Not everything res requests as, uh, a response. And one of the scholars says it does not befit uh, the lions to respond to the barking dogs. And you have to understand, people will test you. They don't even know. They're not even. Co they're not even doing it consciously. They're subconsciously testing you to see: Are you going to doubt yourself, or do you take your stand properly? So I've been tested in the past few uh, weeks quite a lot where they've people these trolls have even reached my work as you know my HR they've reached people that I studied or I've done I've worked with or I've done conference with and tell me to boycott me that's the least they can do that's the smallest thing they can do right these people are trying to test you and you're gonna be tested in your life by such people and you have to make a decision if you are standing strong on your values and what you are calling people to or that you doubt yourself and that's the greatest challenge for you do you doubt yourself when you do such things these people come about with their fake accounts saying things like they know you but they do not know you of course they're just hiding but my name is out there my linkedin account my you know university that i studied it all my cv is fully transparent as for these people of course they are uh, cowards only cowards hide behind pseudo names i've been out in the open for 17 years everyone knows you know everything but what I want you to understand why I don't respond to these people is because they're not worth a response. I responded in the past to certain people. For example, in the first few years of my Dao, I was responding a lot to Christians. Uh, in another phase, I responded to certain people when they needed a response. Okay? For example, uh, you know, some of the discussions that we've had recently. So we've done a certain response. Because this, there's a benefit to the people to understand what actually we are talking about. It was not about this action or that action. It was about a greater picture of a greater challenge and a greater battle. And that's why we spent some time in responding to, to these things. But when it comes to these people saying, oh yeah, Gabriel is a, uh, is a, a, a you know, wife abuser and he's a narcissist, yeah, this, these don't bother me. So I, I, I'm making this video to also advise you how to deal with such things if they happen in your life. It can happen at your work, it can happen anywhere in your life and basically number one you can respond with anger and that's not going to do anything because it's going to hurt you all right it's going to hurt you and actually a lot of times when these people say stuff they might be seeing something superficial in you that might have a an, an, an ounce of truth and because of this that's why you get a bit you get a bit upset or you get a bit you know challenged by that and the second thing you can do is just kind of ignore it and laugh it off and then these people are going to keep going on and the third thing uh, you can do is obviously make a calculated response and that is based obviously if there is a need and there's a benefit for that and the fourth thing you can do is basically continue doing what you are doing without any change and actually you know increase in your work and let it be a motivation for you just to show you it's like their ignorance feeds you you see their ignorance and you're kind of like, my God, you know, what is this? But the least thing you want to do, the worst thing, I'm mean, sorry, you want to do is to doubt yourself. Now, we see the Sahaba, radiallahu anhum, they used to sometimes make certain uh, mistakes. And Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa used to correct them, but never stop them. So, for example, Khalid bin Walid had an interesting incident. I'm not going to go into details in, but there was a, uh, there was a wrong, you can say, choice that he's made. And it costed people. And the Prophet ﷺ, he made a dua and he said, Ya Rab, um, I have nothing to do with this. But did he stop him? Did he take him off? Of course, this was a serious issue, a serious matter, matter. But we learned a huge lesson from him in the tarbiyah of the Prophet ﷺ. Mistakes will be made. But don't doubt yourself. When you are on a path, on a straight path, inshallah, on the deen, there's going to be differences between people. There's going to be arguments. There's going to be issues. Don't doubt yourself. And actually, there is a clarity in the approach and the manhaj and what, what you do in your life that is not something left 
to be like, oh, I, I don't know, it's a doubtful issue. It's, it's not a doubtful issue, especially when we look at the things that we are calling to and what, who are we opposing, which groups. It's very simple. And people will be like, bro, you're just attacking scholar. Wh wh which scholars have I attacked in the past, in the past 17 years? How many did I call by name? Two, three maybe, and respectfully to an extent. Maybe I got a bit uh, hot in certain things, but that's again. And I've talked to these guys personally, and we've discussed the issue as well. And they asked me, you know, you should remove this. And then I said, no, because there is a very important point in what's being said there. And just as you are putting up your video, making your allegiances, be it in the West or the East or whatever, your political allegiance, your Dawa allegiance with which group, not having certain shame for making certain statements and disrespecting the Ummah sometimes. In the, in the same way, I'm not going to feel or doubt myself for making certain statements. I did say about maybe the way was a bit hot and it's not just about this brother or that brother. It's not just about this one or that one. It's about a movement that's taking place in the West with regards to our stance, where does Islam fall, uh, how do we look at the LGBTQ movement, how do we look at liberalization, so-called reform, shirk even, right? And for those who are sincere, they'll see that there's a progression in this phenomenon. Over the past 15 years, things have slowly moved has slowly changed with popular media platforms, people becoming more famous. People can get upset. I mean, people have been saying to me stuff like, you know, personal attacks. But the thing is, it doesn't bother me. You have to understand. You have to understand the background that I come from, what I do, who I am, where I am on the ground, what kind of work do I do, as opposed to some brothers who are behind the keyboards and just following these people blindly and just typing typing trolling they call it trolling <laughs> right that's uh, some of the people who uh, commented on my videos they said brother remove these trolls they're trolling you know you put some nice video about driving around KL and everyone's gonna say bro did you do this bro you're like that bro 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 that's because they know that what I'm saying it it hurts them it upsets them that it is true and the funny thing is a lot of these Guys are guys, weak men, very weak, you know, because if you look what I'm calling to, I'm calling to strong masculinity, according to Quran and Sunnah. Okay, and these are weak men. They'll be like, oh, look at you, your motorcycle is beta. Oh, look at you. He's got some pink flowers behind him in this tree. Oh, oh, oh he's not alpha. Oh, look at you. There's some red behind you. Oh, 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 he's not alpha. Like stuff like that, you know, it's like, wow, that's the best you can come up with. So. Remember in your life, you're going to be tested. And I'm making this video to explain to some of the brothers and sisters who asked the question as to why don't I... I blocked one guy recently because he was just going on and on. And I will not block anyone unless they swear or, or they're hiding behind a fake account, which has no followers, no nothing like this guy. And he said he's a man. And they're just trolling. So I think... In my, you know, 17 years of Dao, I blocked like 10 people, maybe 10 people. Mm, I think maybe a few more uh, who on the Romanian accounts, they threaten my life. But that's about it. Other than that, no, I didn't block. So I said, that's my policy. People can discuss, debate, defer. Um, I'm not even going to be like, oh, respectfully, this, that. It's up to you. I mean, you know, these words will count against you or for you. It is what it is. So, no problem with the test. Bismillah. It's okay. <laughs> it's, uh, you don't understand what kind of challenges I've had in the past few years. And yes, I stand my ground. Um, it's caused some changes in my life recently. Jazakallah khair to all those who've been trolling and who've been saying bad things about me, attacking my family and stuff like that. It's okay. All right, Jazakallah khair for those who have contacted my workplace and the HR and have caused problems. Uh, it doesn't matter, alhamdulillah. Only good came out of it, alhamdulillah. Um, Jazakallah khair. Alhamdulillah, I've uh, discussed these issues with many people. 
and I think it was just so much greatness because we continue. People are like, you gonna keep talking about this? Yes, of course. I mean, I've been talking about this for long. I've been working with youth for long. I'm gonna keep doing it till the day I die. If you don't like it, don't follow me. <laughs> Unfollow, it's very simple. I don't know why they keep following. Like, they like it. I think subconsciously, they they liked it. They're, and it's the fitra. I mean, you know, subhanAllah, this is what, especially the men, they know that they are weak, that they are, you know, the blanket of fajr is very heavy on them. Uh, you know, their food intake is very heavy on them. Uh, the way their body looks is very heavy on them. Right, the way that they're controlled by their women and their wives are the bosses in the house, they're the imams of the house, it's very heavy on them. Uh, that they're being pushed left and right by their bosses and they're, everyone's just pulling left and right and they have no say, it's heavy on them. And the only time they can actually get it out is on these, uh, behind this keyboard. This is what it is, the, the, the condition of most men today is a weak one. And I've been saying that. And sisters sometimes ask me, bro, are you going to make a video about the brothers? I've made so many videos. Go back. Go back 2020 to see all the videos. I, I practice what I preach. I try my best. Alhamdulillah, I'm not uh, giving you as uh, myself as a standard. I just put these videos to inspire others. If they find inspiration, if not, bismillah, unfollow. Go find someone else. Go, I don't know, learn how to, I don't know what to do. Uh, make cupcakes it's okay it's nice it's not, it's not haram to make cupcakes man tasty i love cupcakes do whatever you want it doesn't matter i don't know i'm gonna do what i see from the quran sunnah with the leel okay i'm gonna call to the correct aqidah uh me even you know there's a lot of brothers talking about this and i recommend you guys to listen to these things because it's important to know who is your lord and simple man it's very simple to me. It's not, it's not too difficult. You make your choice in life. But I think 2021, 2020, because of what's been going on in the world, a lot of people have had more time to think about stuff. The liberals have been pushing forward in the West and in the East. And as you can say, the laws that have been passed in 2020 and 2021, the scandals in the Muslim community, the divisions that are coming from the of course non-muslims what they're calling on to with regards to the curriculum the political aspirations you name it um, are huge and you have to make a stance you have to make a stand you have to choose what you're gonna do are you gonna go quran and sunnah traditionalism back to the sahaba which were the ones who were taught by the process or are you gonna go to some philosopher an orientalist and who cares if they're coming from Medina or they've done their studies in Medina? That's, that's back in the days. Used to bees don't make any honey. All right, that's back in the... Used to be, used to be, used to bees. Used to bees don't make any honey. It doesn't matter, you studied in Medina. You studied in the mosque of the Prophet It's a shame, actually, to, to change like that. But then again, people say, well, Imam Shafi, when he went to Egypt, he changed his opinion. Yeah, okay, so what? Don't, don't mix apples and oranges, man. What one of the things that people miss when it comes to Imam Shafi's change when he went to, 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 to Egypt is that the environment affected him. Now, I'm not saying stuff for Allah or you know, but the environment does affect you, it depends what you're surrounded by. Alhamdulillah, the Imam Shafi was surrounded by khair, while other some of these popular brothers are surrounded by not so khair, <laughs> right? So, definitely, if you look at psychology, uh. If you look at uh, behaviorism, you look at many other things, definitely you'll find so many indications that the environment affects us. And indeed, you can progress. If anyone has been following these guys, who are, a lot of them were my teachers at the beginning, 15 years ago, you'll find a change. What kind of change? Are they saying, let's go back to Quran and Sunnah, to Sahaba understanding? Or are they saying, well, this philosopher and this non-Muslim says this, and this way you can understand it that way. And my opinion is, and you know, science with science now and Google Maps and uh, satellites, how can we believe these things? Okay, so you're calling to your own mind. And people need to make a, a, a stance. Who am I gonna follow? Just because he's popular or this one's popular or that one's popular? 
and because it plays the tune that I like, there's a fundamental ethical question here that I want to leave you with. Are you going to follow someone and a system if it agrees with your ethical values and morals? Or are you going to follow a system that you need to adjust your ethical values and morals according to them? And that is what Islam is called in the end. Let's go back, guys, to simple basics, guys. I think that is the problem. We have overcomplicated things. And if we go back to Islam, what does it mean in the end? What is the main understanding or the main meaning of it? It's simple. Submission. You submit yourself to the Creator. قَالُوا سَمِعْنَا وَطَعَنَا you see, and not just that, not just I'm saying, I'm quoting this verse in Surah Al-Baqarah, is when you look at the Sahaba and their application of that verse. Simple, right? You want to follow a philosopher, an orientalist, even though he's Muslim and Muslim name and studied in this country or that country, in this university or that university, or you want to go, and people will say, well, who are you? You think you can just follow the Sahaba? Okay. Then follow the scholars who call you, who give you the example and the dalil and the evidence of Quran and Sunnah, Qawl Sahaba, and so on. As opposed to, you know, Democritus or Aristotle or this or that philosopher Kant or, you know, whatever you, you think, other philosophers. Okay? It's simple, man. It's just simple. People you get oversimplifying. Yeah, very simple. It's very simple. Aslamna, we submit it. We hear, we know that this is revelation from Allah 100%. We do not doubt it. Then we submit to it. No, we like the philosophical discourse because it can give us leeway to bring in our own interpretations and schemas, you know, of, of understanding. We take that and fit it to our own schema as opposed to taking our schema and fitting it to it. We got the, the direction the wrong way. We've, we've going the wrong way, guys. So look around. 2021 is an interesting year, promising to be a very interesting year. It's April 1st today, April <laughs> April 1st. It's pr proving to be a, an interesting year, and there's going to be more changes because the environment is changing fast. The liberal movement, including the lesbian, gay, transgender, all this, are pushing hard, very violently, infiltrating politics, curriculum, you name it. And they're taking more and more. And the Muslims are pushed to conform more and more. This is what it is. Why are these changes happening? Because we somehow are realizing that these are, are we championing these values? No, they're happening and we have to conform. So we find, you know, this Sheikh and that Sheikh with the big CV in the past 10, 15 years ago, and now coming and saying, look, I am an authority and I'm going to tell you you have to do this. And then people are saying, well, you know, it's much easier so we can avoid all the confrontations. Where people don't like to have confrontations. That's what Allah SWT says in the Quran when it comes to uh, conflict. He said they, you don't like it. You, you dislike it, but it's good for you. You dislike it. Or when it's mentioned where you're called to, they say, go you Musa, you and your Lord fight. Go you and this, uh, go that. Munafiqeen staying behind in Medina. Some of the Sahaba laying back and finding excuses and how they got punished for that and chastised. That's the problem. It is uncomfortable to have conflict. And I'm not talking here, I'm calling for armed conflict. You know, again, people, why they'll use this? Because they'll use to incriminate me or say, oh, he's calling for this. Then again, it'll be just, a, you know, shooting at me with, with you know, the wrong ammo. I'm talking here about political discourse. I'm talking here about ethical discourse, ethical conflict, where the Muslims are losing day in and day out. And you are happy because it's comfortable, you know. You got your gay neighbor that you can just feel comfortable with. You got your everyone who's pushing. They're going to be going in the summer, you know, dancing on the on main street in, in pink bikinis. And you're not going to mind it, you know. You're going to be okay with it. Let them do whatever they want. Right? And it's not that these people are calling for good ethics. If you, that's the funny thing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, al khabith." It's like people, they, they get very impressed by the, the increase of this dirt. Right? It's like, every, you know, it's, and it's not they're bringing khayyab. They're not bringing good moral values. They're, they're pushing now for pedophilia. 
under the same umbrella, the same guise of human rights and uh, sexuality. You're not going to be able to stop it, man. And that's what I'm saying to our Western duat who are there getting their paycheck, of course, from, from sometimes from these institutions that will, you know, guide them to what to say and what not to say. Be careful. There's a slippery slope and then there's a point of no return. No, we all have mistakes. We all have problems. But don't be rolling with the problems and become comfortable with them. Okay? As a pro I remind you with the hadith, Al-Haram Ubayn wa Al-Halal Ubayn. The haram is clear and the halal is clear. And between them, there is doubtful things. So be careful, you know, of these doubtful matters. Save your honor, save your religion. You're, you're, you're prodding, you're walking on those in that system of doubtful matters. Your fiqh has become now the fiqh of doubtful matters. That's where you're walking. Your da'wah is in this field. Well, so-and-so said this, and this, you know, I gave you 20 different opinions. What's the point of giving 20 different opinions of 20 different human beings, with all due respect, scholars? And what, you, what are you telling the people with 20 different opinions? What, what have they brought forth? And it seems that the strongest opinion, or it seems that the, oh, but I didn't say that. I was just saying that there's an opinion. The, the, the mind that the human being would say, well, Sheikh said that there's an opinion there. The first thing you talk to people when you ask them a question, or they, I heard there's a different opinion of this, or the difference of opinion of this. So I just take whatever, uh, you know, I mean, he's a scholar, you're a scholar, your scholar is a scholar, my scholar is a scholar, my Sheikh is a scholar. I take his opinion. It's, it's a scholar. فَاسْأَلُوا أَحْلِ الذِّكْرِ إِن كُنْتُمْ لَتَعْلَمُونَ Ask the people of knowledge if you don't know. Some say that that's enough for you. Hmm, raise it. I think in the light of all the other hadith and ayat of the Quran, I think this doesn't hold weight. That it's not just about asking any scholar and taking the opinion of any scholar. Because then what's the point of seeking truth? وَقُلْ جَاءَ الْحَقُّ وَزَهَكَ الْبَاطِلِ إِنَّ الْبَاطِلَ كَانَ زَهُوكَ Indeed, truth has come. Falsehood knocks out falsehood. Falsehood is bound to perish. Where is the haq and the truth anymore? It's become a cliche statement, right? Oh, haq, 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 everything is haq. <coughs> it's funny, you know? So I leave you with that. I leave you with that. For bottom line, I don't care if people talk about me. I don't care if people are going to say and claim that they know me. It doesn't, it doesn't hurt me. It doesn't bother me. Uh, it does not befit sometimes to respond to these people whatsoever. They make they make fools out of themselves, number one, because they're cowards and they don't show who they are. Come straight forward, man. When I said something about a brother, my name was there. My face was there. I called them out by name with my name. So you had an issue with that. Okay, call me out with your name. Show me who you are. Come forward. Make a video. Put your name out there if you're a brother. Because says, I'm a man. I'm a brother. Really. You, you might be a brother, but you're not a man. That's for sure. So simple. Put your name out there. I don't mind. I'm not going to block anyone. Unless they hide behind some fake stuff. And then they start trolling like crazy. Or they start, you know, swearing or stuff like that. Or threatening, like, you know, life issues and whatnot. That's it. Simple. But brother and sister, make a stand. Take a, take, choose what you're going to follow. Philosophy, Greek, Greek philosophy, Western philosophy, Orientalism, if you know what Orientalism is, col colonialism, post-colonial dawah, colonial, colonialism of the mind, of the heart, are you going to choose that? Or simple, Quran and Sunnah. I left amongst you something that if you send, hold strong to it, uh, you'll never go astray. The Book of Allah and the Sunnah. Okay? Wa sunnati wa sunnatul khulafa rashidin al mahdi And my Sunnah and the Sunnah of the rightly guided caliphs. Hold on to it. Bite on it with your molars. Bite on it with your teeth. Hold on, meaning strong. You'll not go. Lan tadillu ba'di abada. Lan tadillu ba'di abada. You'll never go astray after me ever. You choose, man. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته